and sit. Yes. Fix them. Down. Sit. Good girl. Down. Yes. Good girl. Sit. Yes. Good girl. Fix them down. Yes, good girl. Good job.
And before walking away, just remind her that she's still holding it and I did not give the release word. This helps to not have anticipation built up of when she's going to get the release word because she doesn't know if I'm going to walk up and just praise her or if I'm going to walk over and give her the release word. So um, this is setting her up for success. I'm not going to give the release word from all the way back here. I want it to be, like I said, setting her up for success, going up and praising her throughout holding the command when she's doing well, and then giving that release from standing next to her, as we'll see in just a moment. Um, she gets praised when she gets on there, while she's holding it, like she just did a moment ago, and when she gets the release, and then I'll give her praise when she comes up too, like as in when she's gotten the release word. But if it's a premature breaking away from the command, no praise, no treats, or else you're rewarding the fact that she's breaking this command. Good. Word is okay. We use this for all the commands such as wait, um, place, sit, stay, down, stay, anything like that. So I'll do place again. Uh -huh. It's in place. Good place. And right now she's going to get pet up. Good girl. Or I'll give her a treat. Yes. And like I said, for the purpose of this video, we're just using um, praise and such. I'm not going to give her a long term treat or create, say, toy on here because I want her to just focus on holding this command for the purpose of the video. Um, place, uh -uh, uh -uh. so she breaks away, put her right back on that place. Get all four feet right back on that bed, like I said, picking her up, scooting her right back on. You have about 10 seconds to do this, or it's kind of gone over her head what it is we're doing. And that's just every dog for that matter, it's not just fixing alone. Dogs can't generalize time and how long it takes to do something, so if she runs over and she's doing something else and I don't get her right back on that bed, she's kind of like, well, what is it you're correcting me for, or what is it you're putting me back in this spot for? So, so I'm going to be pretty quick with that. Going to break eye contact. Breaking eye contact sometimes is an indicator to the dog that hmm, maybe I can get away with breaking away prematurely. As you see, she's doing really well with that. I'm going to walk over and take a sip of my drink. Anything that seems like distracting. Or if I'm maybe not giving her my 100% attention, definitely can encourage her to possibly break away. And I want to set her up doing this so that way we can work through it and strengthen this command. We make some noises. Ah, 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 ah. So get her right back. I'm going to scoop her up. Place. No praise. I don't want to reward the premature breaking. Make some noise over here. She's a super, super sweet, loving, and affectionate girl. Her favorite is belly rubs. She would sit on her back with her belly to the sky, getting belly rubs all day long if you gave her the choice. So that's how I like to end our training sessions is with a nice long belly rub. Um, we're always going to end all of her training on a positive note or something she's really strong with. So we'd always end on a good note, getting her to do something like sit or down that she's really, really strong with, and then of course a praise session. So this way her last memory of the training is always a positive one. So the moment I'm going to give her the release. Like I said, she doesn't necessarily have to hold the sit position. If she wants to lay down, walk around out of her bed, that's fine. She just can't physically step off. Good girl. Good place. Okay. Yes, good girl. Good job. I'm going to do one more. Fix him. Please. Ah, 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 ah. ah. So she breaks away right after I say it. Please get it right back on there. Like I said, scooping her up, putting her around there. That's what you want to do. Get her right back into that position. Documented everything that they're working on and how well they're doing. 
and then field trips and such. So that's a good time to put her in place, have her hold it while I sit down and do my paperwork. I really love utilizing the command for that sense. Um, that's a good example for something you can do in your home. If you're going to be busy doing the dishes, you can put her in the place command. When you give her home, um, strengthening this command, getting on here and practicing, not necessarily putting her in place and walking right away. You do want to make sure she listens and minds to you. And once she gets it down pat in your home and in the new environment, then you'll be able to do things such as the dishes, your paperwork, if you're working from home, anything like that. So I'm going to have her hold it for just a moment longer. Get my back to her. So if I see, ah, ah, place. So in the beginning of that, her body language started to signal to me, like maybe I'm going to break away. That's a good moment just to be like, ah, ah. Uh -uh, that nice sharp noise that kind of gives her heads up like I don't appreciate what you're doing. And then when she's settled, I'll say, yes, good, good girl, using those positive marker words. You can do those from a distance because they're just as good as treats or praise. And that kind of reassures her that she's doing exactly what you want her to do. And doing that when she's nice and settled and holding the place to man. Again, I'm not going to give that release from a distance. I don't want anticipation because you should eventually be able to leave the room while she holds this command. So if I were giving her the release from a distance and I left the room, there's anticipation building up of, hmm, can I go? Did I get the release for her? She's not watching. Can I go? Just having that standard, I'm not walking up to you and giving the release for her definitely sets her up for success to not prematurely break away. And again, the release. Good girl. Good girl, Vixen. Yes. Okay. Good job. Good job. Yes. Good. Step. So this is Vixen working on her sit stay. Um, it's somewhat similar to the place command, just much more structured. Like I said, the place command. Vix is able to sit, lay down, walk around in front of a juice, get step off. Whereas with a sit stay or a down stay, much more structured. I want her to hold the sit or the down position. Um, what's similar about it is though, I'm going to use similar cues such as a ah, ah like that, using that sharp ah, ah noise before she breaks away. So when I did that, she obviously settled right back into it. She didn't lift her butt up. Say yes, good girl. Ah, ah. Walk right over. Push her right up, right back down. Sit, stay. So the reason for me pushing her butt down and doing that is because when I first started with the command, as you saw, I gave her the sit gesture. She went right into a sit by herself. Um, when she breaks away prematurely, I want to get her right back into that sit position. Same with the down. As I mentioned with the place command, you have approximately 10, 10 seconds to do so. Um, or if it kind of goes over her head, so it'll be quick. Get her right back to the same exact spot in the same exact position. It's not harming her in any way. It's just being structured and making sure she follows through. Making some noises, being distracting. And break eye contact, because again, sometimes this to them is an indicator. Hmm, can I get away with breaking away? And the same thing, I'm not going to give the release from a distance. It's building up anticipation. I want her nice and strong with this command and not having that, hmm, can I go, can I go? So I'll wait until I walk up and I give her the release, which I'll do in just a moment. Ah! I want that focus. We're going to do another sit stay after this, and then I'll do down stay after. She's a very, very sweet girl, very smart girl. Um, it does really take repetition to get a dog to do something, and you want to make sure that you practice this in your home regularly, or else it's kind of going to go dissipate from her memory, you want to do practicing with this as often as possible. I don't give treats with a sit stay or down stay. I don't give a treat to make her sit or to make her down. I don't give her a treat. Um, the reason for that is I don't want her thinking, one, she only has to do it with a food or board, and two, I don't want it to be that when I put her into a down or a sit, she's looking for treat crumbs or looking for a treat or expecting them. So I want to focus on the command, no treats involved. 
gonna have her hold me just for a moment longer. She was super, super sweet, loving girl. As I mentioned while she was holding her place, she did sit and get belly rubs all day, and that is her go-to.
like I said, she wants to be really close to me. She loves like when we go on our work walk, she sticks really close. That's one of her biggest like things is she wants to be cuddly, lovey, and right there with you. So this is something that definitely takes willpower first to be able to hold it. It's not structured. Sit stay is very structured command as is down. So when I put her in a sit and I tell her stay, she has to hold that sit position. So anytime she pops down, I'm gonna pick her back up and get her right back into the sit. Yes. So I tell her to sit. Go 
and this time she gets a treat because I'm not having her hold a sit stay or a down stay. Down, reference into the floor. We got a couple more treats. Sit. Hand gesture up for set. Uh uh. So once you jump over like that, I'm not gonna do it. That's just puppy intakes, that's excitement. Sit. Good girl. Again, if I gave her the treat when she did that, she'd think it's okay. Down, referencing to the floor. Wings on the body goes nice, flat, and relaxed. Do it both one more time. A little closer to the camera. Big in. Sit. Good girl. Big in. Down. Good girl. Good job. Good job. Good job. Next one's go home video. We are going to do her count and weight commands. I'm going to show you how it is we do that. Um, when she first comes home, a way to keep the kennel relationship positive in your home is take a treat. Toss it in the back of the kennel. To our kennel. Oh, she didn't see that one. Show her kennel. Look her Toss it in. Let her go in. Wait till her focus is on you and not eating. You don't want to give um, her the weight command while she's chewing on something. If her focus is on you, not on you, then she's not listening. It's almost like her ears are off. So I'm setting her up for success. Then I'm going to tell her wait. Okay, good girl. And she has to wait for that release word. We want good manners to know the kind of goes in, so I can. Good girl. Wait till she finishes chewing that tree. Gonna tell her wait. Uh -uh. So when she goes to barge out like that, her body language shows that she's pushing through. I'm gonna close her in and tell her, uh uh. And then starting over with the wait command. Wait. Okay, good girl. She has to get that release word before she comes out. Um, the reason for this is it sets up good manners. We don't want her thinking it's okay to barge through. How's that treat in? Tell oh, she didn't see that. How's that treat in? Tell her cow. Wait till she finishes that treat. Wait. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Closing her back in. So I don't want to do that she can get out. I mean, her foot did come out. I don't want her to push through and barge out and think that's acceptable. If she barges out, then of course you're taking 10 steps back. So closing her back in there and utilizing that door to close her back in there quickly definitely sets her up for success that, okay, you're not barging out, you're not getting your way, and you have to follow through and wait for that release word. Wait. Okay, good girl. Good girl. Okay. I'll just find a free treat that was a little closer. It's fine. Take that treat. Toss it in. See that again? That's okay. Good idea, Maria, a little bit with that treat. And this is a good positive relationship with the cow. We don't want her to see the cow as a negative thing. Um, we want it to be that she goes in there and she knows it's okay to be in the cow. Hence why she's not barking, digging, or doing anything like that. When she does come home, she may cry a little bit in the first few nights, and that's because She's in a new environment and she wants to, she hasn't settled in yet, so she'll be trying to get your attention. Worst thing to do is when she's crying, digging or barking in the kennel is to let her out or acknowledge her. If you do that, you're going to feed into some bad behaviors and bad habits that will be way hard to break in the long run. If you just want to cry it out, you want to wait till you can at least count in your head to 10 seconds um, prior to letting her out. So say she was, it was her first night here, and she was crying, crying, crying. Comes time to let her out, I would wait till I come to 10 in my head prior to just opening the door, giving her the waking hand. Wait. Okay, good girl. It's all about setting up the standards that you find acceptable. If you just let her do whatever she wants, of course, then she's not going to mind when you try to make her work on it later. Setting her up for success when she comes home definitely makes it better in the long run. Okay, good girl. Put this so I know she's just in there without a soaker pad or anything. Um, typically, she would, just for this drill, there's nothing in the kennel with her. In her actual kennel, because this is not where her kennel is, and this is not her actual kennel. Um, she always has something to lay on, whether it's a dog blanket or a dog bed, something that keeps her um, off, off that tray. We just don't want her laying on the hard wet tray. It's not good for their joints in the long run, and we want them to be comfortable. So having like a soaker pad in there is what we use for our young dogs or even a dog blanket or a dog bed. 
This way she's not laying on that hard tray. Wait. Uh uh. Wait. Okay, good girl. Definitely was wondering. She wanted to go, wanted to go, and she listened, which is a really good girl. Take a shot, toss it in, throw it come. We also use the wig mirror when walking through doorways or across the street. Same thing, if I went to walk out the doorway with her and she went to barge out, closing that door, putting her back into like a sit or something, having her wait it out. Worst thing I could do is be like, wait, open up the front door, her barge out, and just get her away. You want to make sure you uh uh close her back into the house or whatever setting it is and start over with that weight command. Same thing with the street. You can wait till she's done chewing that tree. Tell her weight. Okay, good girl. Good girl. Okay, tell her time. I don't think she saw it. Listen in, tell her time. Good girl. Now while she's chewing on those treats, I'm gonna get a long-term treat or a crazy toy. Or an example of both. something to do. You don't want to be able to just put her in a kennel and she has nothing to keep her occupied. Dogs can't generalize time and how long it's been since you've been gone. So if she gets bored, of course she's going to be a little more boisterous or the time's going to go by slower for her. So if you set her up for success by giving her something that keeps her occupied, such as a crate safe toy or a long-term treat, which is also considered a crate safe. So anything like this or like this one has to be size appropriate for her. None of these can she swallow and choke on, nor can she with this. It's a full size one. Um, and if you start to know she's ingesting it because she's chewing off the pieces and this is shredding, that's a time to throw it away. You just never would want to create her with like a plush, something with stuffing in it. You don't want it to be anything she could shred up like a rope toy and that she could eventually ingest and choke on. So um, using either a crazy toy or a long term treat. And she always has one of these in the kennel with her. Like I said, this kennel is just set up for this drill. Hence, so not being a dog blanket in there or a toy. I just wanted to use it for the purpose of this video. Um, but I'm going to show you how it is another way to uh, keep a positive relationship with the crate and to get her to kennel. So I'm going to tell her wait. Okay, good girl. So what I would do, uh uh, off. She's really excited for these. When she jumps on me, to an uh uh, off. Um, we've definitely worked really, really well on that one, and sometimes she just gets really excited. She's still a puppy, so uh -uh. as you see, she didn't put her feet on me. Just turning my back. If she jumps on me, I'm never going to use my hands to push her down, and I'm not going to say down, because down is a whole separate command, always saying off, and I'm not going to use my hands to do so, because even though I'm saying off or no, she's hearing yes, 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 because my hand is giving her satisfaction. So taking one of these, I'll start with this one, take it. Get her excited. That may not be the one for her. This one probably will be. So taking the hook, getting her excited. Then get her excited. Toss it in the pound, toss her pound. And like I said, this is something that's gonna keep her occupied, but always giving her something to do and also keeping a positive relationship with the kennel by getting her to get in there with that. So taking that, getting her excited with it, toss it in like I did with the treat. Same thing when I'm about to give her the weight command, I want her to focus on me and not actually shooting that hook. So telling her weight. Okay, good girl. Good girl. I'm gonna try this toy. It's not, these aren't typically her favorites. She really loves the hooks. Um, we're gonna see. Good job. What's that? What's that? No? No? That's okay. We'll do the hook. Right in, tell her come. Give her a couple options of things that she wants while she's in her kennel. Also, a good idea, just because she's not just in those right now, doesn't mean later on she's going to be. And then telling her, her attention, wait. Okay, good girl, good job, good job. She's a super, super sweet girl. So this is Kennel and Wait, um, making sure she goes in the kennel and has a relationship with it, as well as making um, good manners. Thanks, in. Great, good girl, drop it. Good job. So she does play fetch. She's a natural retriever for um, things like this. I'm going to show you how it is we do that. So one second, and grab the treats. Ah, uh -huh. So we'll close up this kennel here. So I'm going to try to give us some more space between the ground. Okay, 